Hey guys, this is Andrew with High Level Reviews, and today I'd like to talk about Threads of Fate. The game was released in July of 2000 in North America on the PlayStation, and was developed and published by Square. The game looks and plays similarly to Brave Fensu Musashi, though with some significant decreases in difficulty and changes to some core mechanics. It focuses on two separate protagonists, named Ru and Mint with different playable stories and distinctly different play styles. While the game relies on some fairly overused tropes, it manages to tell an intriguing and heartfelt story on Rue's side, and a more playful and humorous tale with Mint. These disparities manage to keep the game fresh, and Square did a wonderful job of showing two distinct perspectives on similar events while still intertwining their stories. Rue and Mint are both after a relic called Dew Prism for very different reasons. Rue wants to revive his friend Claire, and Mint wants to use it to exact revenge on her younger sister for forcefully taking Mint's right to the throne. And, of course, for world domination. Rue's adventure starts with a rather heart-wrenching scene that shows his close friend Claire being attacked by a mysterious figure, appropriately called the Arm of Death. Skip forward three years and we find Rue on a ship searching for a relic to resurrect Claire. He lands in Corona, and after running into Klaus, an artifact hunter searching for the relic as well, is able to start his journey. Rue's tale is the more sober and thoughtful of the two, and the writing, though generally straightforward and rarely challenging, does a superb job of exposing some of Rue's selfishness. Several characters question why he'd want to resurrect Claire if that decision might end the world. Still, Rue is a good-hearted dude with a single purpose that will do anything to fulfill it. While I enjoyed Rue's story a little less than Mint's, there are many touching and emotionally charged moments and some very clever exchanges, though many of these exchanges in Rue's story occur because of Mint's near-perfect comedic timing. Her story begins in a castle. She's busy being a sarcastic and disagreeable toot as her sister, Maya begins to tell her that she's not worthy of becoming a princess. Mint attempts to call her bluff and is met with Maya's newfound power. She also finds herself on the same ship Rue took to Corona and thus begins her path to locate the relic. Mint's story, while diametrically opposed in so many ways, still has you fighting many of the same bosses and visiting all of the same ruins and locations. The tone of her adventure is an aggressively snarky and anti-authority one that intrigued me and kept me cracking up with nearly every exchange. She's snide, rude, and conniving and wants to take over the world and apparently never eat pumpkins in the process. Her story is lighthearted and rarely hits the more serious note that Rue's story does. She's a well-written anti-hero and a funny distortion of the princess trope. The story is far from bad, but at times lacks inventiveness. The relic is literally just called Relic for a large portion of the game, and the story falls into a lot of cliches, despite certain hilarious subversions. Still, there's a wonderful charm and lightheartedness to it that keeps you entertained long enough to allow the addictive combat to take hold. What keeps Threads of Fate from getting monotonous is the stark difference in playstyle between the two characters. Rue attacks with his Arc Edge and can transform into monsters that he defeats to solve environmental puzzles or exploit weaknesses in other monsters. I found while there was some diversity in value in some of the transformations, a lot of them weren't more effective than Rue's normal form and there were a lot of duplications in skills. I ended up rarely transforming unless progression required it. Had they decreased the quantity but increased the effectiveness of certain ones, I think this system would have been a little more rewarding. Mint attacks with her rings and uses magic she learns as the game progresses. By the end of the game, Mint has a vast arsenal of spells and is clearly the stronger of the two characters, despite struggling a bit early in the game. Both gain MP by using spells and gain HP by simply being attacked. It's an odd system initially, but quickly becomes second nature and helps to eliminate grinding, outside of a few specific extras, that is. There aren't any consumables. Instead, you restore MP and HP after defeating monsters. This really helps streamline the experience and keeps the action moving forward. The menu is pretty bare bones and any equipment upgrades purchased through the shop are automatically equipped. The developers certainly missed an opportunity to add a bit of depth by adding a wider variety of weapons and armor, but it's not something that significantly detracts from the experience. It's also quite difficult to actually get a game over in Threads of Fate. If you take a fatal blow, you use a coin. Varying types determine the amount of MP you have when you return, and you're able to continue without losing much ground. It's a remarkably forgiving system for an already easy game. There is a slight delay after a jump, so timing a quick jump after you've just landed can get a bit cumbersome and clunky if you're not patient. 
But there aren't many platforming sections outside of Mel's minigames, which is an abrupt departure from the rest of the game and, quite frankly, something I could have done without. Apparently, many players quit playing the game out of frustration due to this particular segment. The fact that it's forced on you and must be completed before advancing only augments the frustration. Though the combat is relatively easy and lacks the depth most RPGs contain, it's still addictive and an enjoyable part of the game. Aurally, Threads of Fate is a vastly underrated game. Junya Nakano, who went on to help with Final Fantasy X and XIII, did the score and it brought him worldwide recognition. The sound is more electronic than his other works and contains many drum riffs but varies enough to really accentuate certain scenes. I don't often recommend listening to soundtracks separately, but this is one that can certainly stand on its own. Graphically, the game does suffer in some areas but is generally fun to look at. The spells and environments are all well done and the weapons certainly felt unique. It's pretty impressive the amount of details the character models contain given the limitations of the system. While it might be easy to discredit Threads of Fate because of its minor flaws, that would be disingenuous and a little unfair. I've said this about other games, but the whole is truly greater than the sum of its parts. Mint's dialogue and hilarious physical comedy, Rue's singular mission to repay a debt to a friend, many fun boss fights and set pieces, and the mostly responsive controls keep the game's fun factor high above its annoyances. I certainly recommend giving this game a shot. If you enjoyed the review, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. This has been Andrew with High Level Reviews and I appreciate you guys stopping by.